Good morning. Today we are going to talk about fun with drama. Fun with drama is an elective course that is offered by the Department of English and it runs on a two credit mode. In this course, we are going to have tutorials and you are going to talk about drama. You are going to learn how to perform drama and you are going to improve your personality through this. As the name of the paper indicates, fun with drama. And it is quite exciting to know that in this paper, you are allowed to get a exposure and you are allowed to speak for yourself. You are getting a out of the box thinking. So let us first talk about what are the benefits of this course. Children, this course encourages you to have a positive interaction with your colleagues, with your playmates, with your classmates. In this course, what basically we are intending is to help you develop as effective communicators and for this purpose, drama has been used as the teaching methodology. Through drama, you are expressing your feelings, thoughts, opinions and all the other things that are needed for an effective communicator. So let us just take upon how do we move in this course and what are the benefits that you will be getting when you take this paper or when you study this course. This is a course children wherein you are building your confidence. Now your confidence would be raised when again and again you come to the stage and perform. Each time you come to the stage, you speak something, you develop confidence and the more you do this, it will be more effective. So this is a course wherein you are getting a direct exposure to the stage. Stage here we mean that you are developing the play, you are writing the play, you are directing it and you are even producing it in a manner that helps you develop your personality. Children, often we think in English, we think uh, in Hindi and we are uh, then translating it into English. We say it is an L1, L2 process. L1, L1 is language one, that is Hindi. We are thinking in Hindi, most of us. It is not that, that all of you do that, but most of us because it is our mother tongue, we cannot help it. So we think in Hindi or whatever be your mother tongue for that matter. And then we translate it into English, that is L2. We are getting the term L2 over here for English. Now in this process, you do not get the exact equivalent of the word that you have thought. And it delays your process or process of communication or the speaking part. So through this course, what we are trying to do is to make you think in English. Now, it is something which is not very easy. I do understand that. But we are trying to do that. And there have been cases wherein the students have got very good results once they have absorb themselves completely into this. A very clear example of it is children, why do we like movies? Why do we like uh, plays? A very simple thing children wherein we like them because when we are watching a movie, we are completely absorbed in it. We are able to identify ourselves with the characters that are on screen. You will see that you are watching a movie and all of a sudden tears are rolling down your eyes. All of a sudden you feel that you are not feeling comfortable. It is not something that is happening to you, but it is something that is happening to the character on stage, to the person who is there on the screen. So why is it 
character, whatever happens to that person, you feel that it is same thing that is happening to me. And this is the reason you feel uncomfortable, you feel happy at times when the character is happy, you are also happy. When the character is sad, you are also sad. When the actor is, uh, is performing very well, you feel so enthused, you feel so excited. The reason is very simple, you are identifying yourself with the character and you are moving with that character on that silver screen. So in this paper also, we are trying to have the same kind of effect and basically it is a course that helps you develop your confidence and fight with your inhibitions that stop you, that hinder you to speak in English. Inhibitions, they are the obstacles that all of us have in our mind, in our hearts that stop us from doing any kind of a thing which we really want. All of us know that English is a global language. It is important for us to speak in English because we are moving in a global world and it is an international language. The importance of this language cannot be denied by anyone. But still, we are not so comfortable in speaking in English as we are with any other language that we are speaking right from our childhood. As I already referred, L1, we are very comfortable in speaking in L1, that is our mother tongue, but we are not so comfortable in speaking in L2. It could be any other foreign language. Here we take it as English. So the basic reason for not being able to adapt ourselves in other language is our inhibitions. We are always having some kind of fear that obstructs us to speak in English or speak in any other foreign language. Now those inhibitions could be what will people think? How do I look when I speak in English? Will there be people who would laugh on me? What will I do if I am not performing well? How would I face the audience? All these things, they stop us from performing. But since it is a class of your own, it is your own comfort zone, please feel free and bring out your ideas. All of us are here to learn. We are all performers. We are all actors. We are all script writers. We are all directors. So when you have the same lobby, you would certainly come out of your inhibitions and try and fight with them and emerge as leaders. As someone who has fought with the inhibitions and had a victory over them. Through this course, we are trying to encourage you to speak in English through various methods. At times, we will be acting a play. At times, we will be even viewing a play. At times, I would ask you to write, some, write a creative scene or some situations from the real life we would take up and we would perform on stage. When you do that, you are certainly building the confidence to speak in English. In a normal uh, syllabus, you have a structured syllabus wherein you have to go through the particular things. For example, you have to talk about communication, you have to talk about conversation, you have to talk about uh, the writing skills, you have to talk about the other aspects that make you a communicator and they are defined that these all things would be there in the syllabi and you have to study all these things. But here we are focusing on all the four skills that is LSRW, the listening skills, the speaking skills, the reading skills and the writing skills. All the four skills that help us to be a good communicator are covered in this syllabus because when you are writing a script, you are focusing on the writing part. The others are, when they are performing, they are moving on the listening skills. They are developing the listening skills. When you are reading, 
it is a very good idea to have this kind of curriculum in our university that promotes active learning. It is a learning that will make you go in the long run because you are actively involved in this process of learning. A very well Chinese proverb says that tell me and I will forget. Teach me and I will remember. Involve me, I will learn. As simple as that, children. Please go through it once again. Tell me and I will forget. Teach me and I will remember. Involve me and I will learn. So when you are involved in something, you will automatically learn. Nobody is imposing anything on you. Nobody is trying to tell you that you should do this or you should do, you should not do this. It is your active involvement that will help you go in the long run. The more you are actively involved in the paper, the more you are actively involved in the script, in the play, the better you will be performing. Now what do you do in this course? There are basically four things or that you would be doing in this course that is script writing, direction, acting and staging. Script writing, let us first talk about that. In order to perform a play, you need to first of all write a script. Now script is something that you will have to write and so the first step to write the script is to develop a story. You will have to have a story wherein you have certain characters and that would be further divided or that would be further developed as script. When you have written the script, you will have to think about the actors who would be performing it within your group. The host is such that you would be divided into various groups. For example, let us take up a group of six to eight students. Now, this is their group. In this group, all of us, that is all the six members, you will brainstorm and think about a script. I mean, give you some things that, now, uh, supposing I give you a theme that you have to perform or play on friendship. This is the theme. And on this theme, you are going to develop the script, you are going to write it, and you are going to write the dialogues, and you are going to present it, or perform it, or stage it. So when you have got the theme, you have to first think of the story. Once you have written the story, and it is not one person's job to write the story. Everybody, for that matter, in the group, will contribute his or her idea into the development of the storyline. And that story then would be converted into script. How is it converted into script? In script, you will have to mention your characters. You will have to decide who would play the main role, who is who's going to be the protagonist, that is the main character, who would be the second character, who would play what, what is the thing that we should keep in mind when we are making our characters, when we are in the process of building our characters? It is something that you should always keep in mind, the strengths of the characters. Now each member in your group has got certain strengths. You will have to bang on those strengths. You will have to count on those strengths and give or develop the role accordingly. And that will help you develop the play in a good sense. There will be certain students with you children in your group who are a little inhibited or who are a little inhibited by the by for going to the stage. So try and give them less dialogues in the beginning and over a period of time as they keep on performing, give them good dialogues. And Certainly you would improve. So we have, we have a very very structured thing into this that you first of all start with writing the story. The story further develops into a script and that script would further be developed into the character.
character characters and the characters would then decide that what should be their modus of friendly how should they perform now when we talk about that how should they perform we come to the next part that is direction how do you direct a play when you are directing a play you have to take care of certain things you have to take care of the setting of the play what would be your setting in a modern drama we do not need much of the setting if you are for example if you are planning a cafeteria scene you can take up the blackboard as uh, you can uh, write something on the blackboard you can have some chairs and then give it a setting like that and move on with this with the dialogues and give it a effect the characters play a major role in the play when you are developing your characters please keep in mind that you give enough space or the scope of development to the characters the characters have to evolve and grow in the play and that is how the play would be a successful one now it all depends upon your team coordination how well do you coordinate with your team will be the success of the play it is something that you have to always bear in mind that your team members are very important each and every member who is there in your team plays a significant role in the performance of the play so please try and understand this fact and give equal importance to all the characters that are there in the play the stage part as we discussed earlier also should be simple try and use minimum of the stage props try and develop your own methodology to present your play or your plot in the manner that is quite convincing to your audience you will have to take in place the pros and cons of the performances and so for this purpose you have to take a plot which is such that is convincing and the characters should perform in a manner that they are able to win the hearts of the people that is what we are having this course for the evaluation strategy let us talk about that also i will be evaluating you on your script writing characterization dialogue delivery and presentation how well you have written the script what is your characterization how you have divided the group into the characters what roles you have given to each and every person in the play then dialogue delivery how are you delivering your dialogues are you taking care of the intonations the rise and fall in the pitch are you able to present yourself in an effective manner and the overall presentation of the play would be judged it would also be judged by you people the evaluation would be done by the teacher as well as we will also move with the peer evaluation strategy for example if one group is performing and the other group is watching the play so now that group can evaluate the performance of the group who is performing the second round the other group performs and the group that was performing here previously will go and evaluate them now this is something that is going to be very very interesting because you have to put yourself into the shoe of every person and then see that what would i do or how do i perform and it would be a very very fair evaluation please keep in mind that the more fair you are in your evaluation strategy the more you are helping your peer mates to develop their personality please tell that this is good and this needs to be improved please take a note of the good things of the good performances if you feel that there is a even if the person has got less dialogues and he or she has performed it very well or has delivered it very well please take a note of it and tell it openly it is always good to appreciate it and then to criticize all of us have a habit of um, finding 
calls with the other party. But we forget that the same faults can be there within us also. So fault finding is easy, but appreciation is difficult. So please try and appreciate the good things that are there in each and every person. All of us have something good, something that is positive, something that we really should know and explore it. The once you are able to bang on your positive, there could be no force that will stop you to move ahead. So try and understand these things and have a very, very fair evaluation for everyone. Next, we will talk about the contents. What are we going to study in this course? A brief introduction, the basic part children, of course, it is you who would be doing, it is you who would be writing your scripts, changing it, directing it and it is an absolute autonomy to you that how you present it or how you want to present it in the manner or that is more and more convincing. But still, you need to uh, take care of certain elements of drama. You need to understand what is tragedy, what is comedy, what is tragic comedy, all these things, there are certain important terminologies that are there in drama and that should be understood by each one of us very clearly. So here we move with that. Drama comes from a Greek word, dram, D-R-A-M, dram, which means to do, to perform, to act. It is also referred as play. So in short, a drama or a play is a story acted out live on stage. And we, a drama or play is something, is a story that is acted out live on stage. The elements of drama. These are certain elements that make a drama. The first is plot. Plot is the main storyline of the play. Theme, it is the basic idea of the play. Character, the person, animal or thing in the story are the ones who play up the characters in the play. Now moving on to the Plot. Let us first discuss what is plot. As I already told you that when you are writing your script, you have to first write it a story and then develop it into script. So when you are developing your script, you have to further divide it into plot and scenes. Your plot should be a compact one. Means it should be a very strong plot. And for that, you should take up a theme. Whatever you are writing, it should have or must convey a theme. Something that is related or something that is there in your plot. And that theme should be very clearly known to the audience. It is not that, that you announce the theme to the audience before you perform. It should unfold gradually and naturally through your characters and through your play. That is what will make a drama a good one. So when you are choosing a plot, take care that your plot is a tight one. There are no loose ends in your plot. And then further divide it into scenes. You may have one scene, two scene, three scene. It can further be divided into act one, act two, act three. And then it could be concluded. And for that, you need to take care of the theme. Characters are very, very important. Characters are the ones who will give life to your play. So take care of your characters very well. Whosoever is performing, the dialogue delivery of that person has to be taken in account. And the more you rehearse, 
and you know. So when you are doing these things, you have to first check that this character I am going to play. So I need to develop that kind of an attitude within me so that when I come on stage, people accept me into that role. Now if I come into the role of a king and I am behaving like a beggar or a normal ordinary person, people will not be able to relate to me as the king. So if you have taken a character who is a king, you will have to give that kind of importance, you will have to give that kind of a decorum to the character so that he is able to perform it in the way that is desired. And that is why characters are the ones who are very very important. And you have to be totally absorbed into the character. Once you are totally absorbed into the portrayals, into the character, you will automatically find a change in yourself. And that is the beauty of the paper. You will automatically start thinking in English, you will start speaking in English and you will start performing as very good communicators. So try and understand it. It is something that has fun along with learning. Plot, as I have already said to you children, as we have already discussed, plot is something that is uh, it's a story or it is the it is it are the events that make up a story, particularly as they relate to one another in a pattern in sequence through cause and effect or by coincidence. The scene should unfold automatically. This should be a beginning, middle, and an end. You cannot have the end first and then uh, speak about the middle and then in between you take up with the, the beginning. You have to make a structured plot. It should have a beginning, middle, and an end. And it is usually structured with acts and scenes. Let us move ahead. The theme. The plot is called the body of the play and theme is called the soul of the play. Now all of us know how important is our soul. If the soul of the play is good, automatically the plot would be good. So take care that you choose a very good theme and by good or bad we mean you should be able to justify that theme in the plot. Whatever plot you are taking, whatever actors you have portrayed or whatever characters you have mentioned in that plot, they should be able to justify the theme that is there. And remember, it should be a gradual process, a very, very natural way. It should unfold in a way that is very, very natural. Only then it will be liked by your audience and even when you will perform it, you will feel that we have done justice to what we have thought, what we have conceived and what we have developed. Dialogues. It is something very, very important to me. The dialogues that you choose, they are the sum and substance of the play. Each word uttered by the character furthers the business of the play and contributes to its effect as a whole. So, your dialogues should be written in a manner that is very effective. It is in line with the theme that you have taken and it further substantiates the plot. It is something that strengthens your plot. Only then you will find that your drama is coming to life. See children, the visual element, the overall element of drama, it should comprise of these things. That is, it should have costumes, scenes, dialogues, music. You can also add a little music to the um, to the play wherever you are having. Supposingly, you have, have you have planned a plot wherein there is a party scene, so you can add some music to show that there is something. There is a sad note. So you can add that music to show that there is something sad going on. Now when you add music to your play, your play would become interesting one. And costumes, certain 
these are the people that make a play all of us know but still i will just tell it actor that is the male performer is said to be the actor actress the female performer one who is performing the female role is said to be actress cast all performers selected to portray the characters they form cast and director is the one who instructs actors on how to portray characters but in our case all of us are actors all of us are actresses all of us make the cast and all of us produce it so we all are the people who will make the play playwright in general term playwright is a person who writes plays script it is the printed copy of the play acts they are the major scenes or sections of the play and scenes they are the small sections of the play you will develop a plot into acts and that acts would be divided into scenes now this is something interesting that all of us must keep in mind i already told you that a play must have a beginning middle and end now what do we have in the beginning how do we go about with it so children first of all you will have to take up or you will have to view this as exposition exposition means exposing the characters you will have to take up the plot such that in the first one or two scenes the conflict or the problem that is there in the play is exposed and then further through acts through particular scenes and characters you take it to a high it develops into complications it builds tension and finally it is the climax that is when it is the highest point to do or not to do what do i do should i take this profession or should i take this one should i marry her what should i do now over here your climax should be built and the last part would be the resolution how do you solve the problem that was there at the initial level that is at the exposition level there was a problem and how do you solve that problem how well do you solve that problem would be the last one that is resolution so you have to build the talk in a way that is quite convincing to everybody and that has the involvement of all the characters and keeping these three main points that is exposition climax and resolution all these three notes should be kept in mind and should be executed in the play in a very well or structured manner only then your play would be worth a performance there are certain kinds of play now there is a very quick chat i just thought i should discuss with you to tell you that what are the kinds of play a young woman wants to marry her love but her mother disapproves of him after many setbacks the suitor wins the mother's approval and the lover's marry this is one plot that i have given you this is one idea that i have given you and you have to develop it into many scenes for example another a young man blinded by passion versus a few to fight between his family and his lovers the play ends with the deaths of two lovers now can you tell me what is which one is uh, will be a uh, plot for the 
and the next would be a tragic plot. So the first would be tragedy and the next a comedy. There are different forms or kinds of drama as we have already said. Comedy, tragedy and tragic comedy. A combination of both a tragedy and comedy is said to be a tragic comedy. Now let us study what is there in the comedy, what is there in tragedy. A comedy ends happily. There is some very, the, though it can have all the elements, the exposition would be there, the climax would be there, the resolution would be there, but the end of the comedy would be a happy one. So that is why it is said to be a comedy. Whereas a tragedy depicts serious and important events in the play and the result is an unhappy one. The end result would be a one that is unhappy. So that is why we say that a tragedy depicts serious and important events. Whereas a tragic comedy, it is a combination of both. It has tragedy and it is also having some kind of comedy. So when you are incorporating both the elements into the play, it is tragic comedy. That is, in the process, there would be some people who would die and there would be some people who would live happily ever after. So this kind of concept is said to be tragic comedies. But in the modern context, we do not stress more upon the tragedies or comedies. We are more focusing on the tragic comedy parts wherein there is something that is going on interesting and unfolding in a manner that gives a satisfaction or that is gratifying to everyone. In a tragedy, it is, I will just introduce you to the, to the classic tragedies. The classic tragedies, the people, they have or the heroes, they are subjected to fate, life and death. They are generally noble figures. But what leads to their fall is a tragic flaw. There is some kind of flaw in them which leads to their downfall. For example, children, I will just uh, give you an example of Hamlet. All of you uh, have uh, seen Hamlet or most of you have seen the movie Hather that has been developed on uh, Hamlet. Now, in the original play, I am just talking directly to the original play where by Shakespeare and it is a tragedy. And it is a tragedy because Shakespeare highlighted this part of Hamlet as and his tragic flaw was his delay and indecision. He delayed the act of taking a revenge so much that
develop it into the way you find it. Similarly, in comedies, the heroes can be ordinary people and they are able to overcome their flaws and achieve happiness. That is the beauty of comedy. There are some very good comedies like Twelfth Night, or for again, it's from Shakespeare that you should read. She Stoops to Conquer is another one that would uh, again help you develop a plot, understand a plot. Certain things that are there in literature that it adds to the beauty of the paper. So try and read it if you have uh, time. Try and download it from the uh, from the net. There would there are uh, very good. Uh, you have still get the original over there. So if you read it, you will get an idea. And once you get an idea, you can incorporate it into your own words and that will help you develop your plot. You will then understand that how or why is it important to have a tight plot or compact plot. So children, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. I hope that all of you give very good performances, perform well. All of you develop confidence and the purpose of this course is fulfilled. So all the best. If you have any queries, please feel free to contact me or please feel free to talk to me. I will be very happy to answer to your queries. Thank you very much.